South Wingfield is an ex-mining village, about six miles from Matlock and two miles from Creich. It sits on the V5035 and the River Amber runs through the lower parts of the parish. The centre of the village is at the marketplace where Manor Road, Church Lane, Inns Lane and High Road meet. But over the past two centuries, South Wingfield has spread eastwards towards Oakerthorpe, with new housing developments on both sides of Church Lane as it sweeps downhill past the infant school and runs along the valley floor beside the River Amber. I walked down Manor Road, passing a lovely derelict house to my right. A little way beyond, I reached one of two pubs in South Wingfield, the old yew tree. Retracing my steps, I continued along Church Lane. Well, my walk starts here in South Wingfield, so this is another walk in the Amber Valley district of Derbyshire. Decided to come away from the Peak District again because it's a weekend and it gets busy, so hopefully it'll be a lot quieter today. So I've just had a walk around the village, I'm going to have a look at the church now. I soon passed South Wingfield's other pub, the Bluebell. At the bottom of the hill, I passed Taylor's corn stalls and the old mill. The picturesque but somewhat isolated parish church of All Saints lies about half a mile from the village centre. It dates from the 12th century and is in a joint parish with St Mary's Church at Creich. Another beautiful church. Always makes my day on a walk when I see a church. As I said before, I'm not religious, but I just love churches as buildings. I think they're gorgeous. Okay, well, I'll just walk back into the main part of the village and I'll start my walk. Walking back up the hill into the village, I followed High Road, soon taking a footpath on the left between the houses, signposted for more and more. Crossing a stile, I entered a field, from where I had wide open views across the countryside of Amber Valley and North East Derbyshire. Heading in a north-westerly direction, I continued following the path which crossed several more fields. This morning. A little bit of drizzle in the air too, but nothing to worry about at the moment. I don't want to be speaking too soon though. <laughs> it is meant to be dry today. Cloudy, but that's fine. It'll still be a nice walk. So it's Saturday the 6th of November 2021 today and uh, of course it's the day after bonfire night yesterday, but I always remember the 5th of November from my point of view for being my dad's birthday. And he would have been 80 yesterday, bless him. Wow. 80 years old, that's a good age. And may he have many, many more years to come. I mean, I've had very little contact with my dad for most of my life, sadly. But that's another story which I won't bore you with. 
but uh, whatever he was up to yesterday, I hope he had a lovely day. I hope it was a special day for his 80th. I always remember Mum telling me, I'm sure it'll be 56, 56 years ago today, the 6th of November, so the day after my dad's birthday, that was when my mum and dad got married. So yeah, they would have got married on the 6th of November, 1965, six months before I was born. Wow, wonderful. Yeah, hey, hey. anyway, it's gonna be a nice walk today. And happy birthday to my dad for yesterday. Having crossed further fields, I was now approaching the next hamlet on this walk. So I'm now arriving in Moorwood Moor. The path came out onto a track, which led out onto a lane beside a house. Turning left, I headed into Moorwood Moor. At the T-junction, I was in front of the excellent White Hart Inn. I think I've never been to Maud Moor once or twice in my entire life. <laughs> it's a nice place. It's one of those places, again, where it's off the beaten track, so you don't generally pass through it to get to anywhere else. But I have heard that the White Hart is a lovely pub. I know a few people from work and some other friends of mine, they've had meals here in the past and they say it's lovely. So again, it's another place that I need to come to on my ever-growing places to come to. <laughs> I followed the footpath opposite, which started alongside the edge of the pub car park. Descending slightly beside the pub gardens, I crossed a brook before starting to climb up again the other side, heading in a southwesterly direction. Time ended as I went through a narrow gate to reach a grassy track near farm buildings, where I turned left. Well, first thing this morning, before I came out to do this walk, I went and had my flu jab. <laughs> yeah, earlier this week, I received a text saying, please book your appointment for your flu jab. So I rang the doctor straight away and the appointment was for 10 to 9 this morning, so that was good. Uh, I've had more jabs this year <laughs> than any other year ever in my life. But I'm sure that's the case for most of us, isn't it? I mean, like most of us, I've had two jabs for, the, for COVID. Uh, now I have my flu jab and I think next month, sometime before Christmas anyway, I should be eligible for my booster jab. So we'll see. So this year, I should have had four jabs. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Oh, there's a dog barking at me now. <laughs> oh, I've got a dog barking at me. <laughs> Where is he? I can't see him. It's over there somewhere. Just in the farmyard there. Lovely looking dog. Wouldn't like to get too close to him though. Beyond the farm buildings, I stayed on the track, which soon became a tarmac lane. Mm. Had a dog barking at me, now I've got the geese. <laughs> 
Bra då. Ja. ja. Oh, poor things. They're gone quiet now because they're disappointed that I've not got any food for them. <laughs> they probably heard me coming and rushed up to the gate to greet me, but I've got no food to give them, I'm sorry. Oh, I have, but I shouldn't really be feeding someone else's geese. <laughs> As the lane passed Hilltop Farm to my right, the open views to my left were amazing and I could see towards Nottinghamshire to the east. The lane ended at the B5035 at Parkhead. I crossed the road to Take Park Lane opposite, turning off right almost immediately at a footpath next to a house. I was now heading more or less in a southerly direction, as my route slowly descended along a narrow path through the lovely Wingfield Park. I've never done this walk probably twice before. I remember the first time was some years ago with a friend of mine and uh, he's lived in Derbyshire all his life so he knows the area better than I'll ever know it. Um, but I did come again here just a few years ago just on my own. Um, say it's lovely you don't always have to do walks in the Peak District to have lovely walks in Derbyshire. I mean again I'm only a few miles from home here and there are lots of walks in Amber Valley which are very pleasant indeed. And this is another great one. And the beauty with this, it's like I'm coming here today on a Saturday. Doubt, doubtless if I was walking somewhere in the Peak District, it would be very busy. You know, which is fine because it's a popular area. But this is a lovely part too. And the beauty is that so far, I've only seen two people on this walk at the moment. So <laughs> I might pass more later on, but generally, Doing this walk today will be a lot quieter than doing any of my walks in the Peak District. At the bottom of the descent, I forded a stream. Continuing the other side, I began to slowly ascend again. So I'd like to give another shout out. And today's shout out goes to Peter Dell. Hi Peter, hope you're well. <laughs> I'm laughing because about two or three weeks ago, I was walking along the main road near to where I live. And I was just crossing the entrance of this driveway, this driveway that leads into an old, it's a building which has now been converted into a, ret a retirement village. Um, so I was just crossing over the entrance of the driveway and there was a car that was turning off the main road to, to turn into that driveway. So I just was, I just sort of walked in front of it slightly and then carried on walking along the main road. But as I was heading on, of course I was just focused on what I was doing, you know, in my own little world as always, uh, I was conscious that the car had stopped at the entrance to that driveway. So. As I was walking on, I suddenly heard, excuse me, and then out of the corner of my eye, I could see this man running towards me. <laughs> it startled me actually at first, because I was just conscious of this figure running towards me. But then the man said, I just wanted to say hello and say thank you for your films, he said. Oh, that was lovely. So that was Peter. So thank you, Peter. So Peter had actually seen me crossing that driveway so he stopped and ran after me to say hello and thank you for the films that was really lovely so thank you so much for that Peter and it was really nice to meet you Peter lives local um, and uh, no doubt we'll bump into each other again soon that'll be really nice so hopefully next time when we do so I won't get startled then <laughs>
through a gate, I came to a junction, where I turned left. gap style. Well that's a bit wider than all of them so that gap style is obviously built for me. <laughs> the path was now taking me eastwards, providing great views over Wingfield Park to my left and towards Ripley to my right. Eventually, the path emerged onto a quiet lane at a sharp end. Yeah, it's not much further to go now, actually. Just follow this lane, turn left at the bottom, and then take the first footpath on the right, which takes me up over that hill. I think before doing so, I'm going to stop and have my sandwich. Descending to a junction, I followed the lane towards Kreitch and South Wingfield, soon going over a stile on the right to take a footpath, which climbed up quite steeply along the edge of a field. The wind was now very strong, so I quickened my pace as I made my way northwards. getting really windy now. <laughs> anyway, I am now at the highlight of today's walk. I'm at Wingfield Manor. This is probably as close to Wingfield Manor that I'm going to get. You can actually walk round it because it's managed by English Heritage but at the moment their website says it's closed so I don't know whether it's because of Covid or whether it's, there's some work going on here but at the moment it's not open at all so but yeah it still looks good from what I can see from the outside of it. <laughs> on a hill above South Wingfield stands the dramatic ruins of Wingfield Manor. It was built in the 1440s for the wealthy Lord Cromwell. It was later the home of the Earl of Shrewsbury, who imprisoned Mary Queen of Scots here in 1569, 1584 and 1585. The manor is administered by English Heritage, but is currently closed to the public until further notice. Ah. Just see the sun lingering behind the clouds. It's trying to come out, but it's it's not managing it. Still, it's not been a bad day. I can't complain. Say so yeah, a little bit of drizzle at the beginning, but uh, it's been breezy. But certainly nothing to worry about. It's been a nice day. I've seen three people on the walk, and then just as I was approaching Wingfield Manor, there was a whole group of people there, <laughs> just walking up the track towards where I was standing in front of the manor on the other side. Sort of like about, I don't know, 10, 15 people, all dressed up in wax jackets, flat caps. So I don't know what they were doing. But yeah. Okay, well, I'm nearly back at South Wingfield now then. I followed the lane, which curved to the left below Wingfield Manor, as I headed back into the village. It's very dramatic on the hilltop there. Yeah. Lovely. Now those people I saw earlier, just as I was approaching Wingfield Manor, I think they're out shooting pheasants. I can hear shouting around here somewhere, voices in the woods, I think it's them. And I can hear shots going off now and again. So I think they're shooting pheasants. 
Well, they're shooting something anyway. <laughs> but I have seen a few pheasants around, scuttling around and I can hear them. Anyway, that was another lovely walk. I'm back in South Wingfield now, so I'm gonna just walk back to my car. It's been a 10 minute drive home. Mm -hmm.